Hey guys, in a recent video, Alpha Investment talks about Hasbro Posts, and he doesn't seem to be a fan of it. So what is Hasbro Posts? It is a direct-to-consumer e-commerce store. And currently, they don't sell any Magic Cards, but obviously Mythic Editions will be put into their e-commerce store rather than eBay, because eBay was a disaster. Uh, they sell Power Rangers, Nerf guns, pretty much their entire line of product. It would be very strange if for whatever reason they just specifically left off Magic the Gathering. Now, Post is a subscription model which is similar to Rudy. So Rudy's model is you pay him a monthly fee and then you get the ability to buy things. And I don't know if Rudy offers free shipping or not, but Post would offer free shipping. So you pay your post fee, just like an Amazon, just like an Alpha Investment, and then you would get free shipping, and then you would be able to buy product early, which is obviously very advantageous in Magic the Gathering, and so on. And you do, you get special offers. It would be like Amazon Prime, except instead of everyone being Amazon Prime members, there's like whoever pays the most gets to be a Hasbro post member. Now, a little bit update on my store. I have figured out a way for my store to work. Uh, previously, uh, it had, was, you know, one bad story after another bad story. Uh, part of the reason was we had a retail center and then we also were doing e-commerce. We decided to get rid of the retail space altogether. I actually have video in 4K, which is taking a long time because I live in the middle of nowhere. So to upload said video, uh, Facebook, uh, not fit YouTube pauses the video at like 58% every time and then that's the end of the video. But I have a video from the store, I have video from us moving. We have decided to get rid of our lease. So that means we're moving the majority of our stuff to my home office. And we decided to just sell cards, um, have lower overhead. Uh, you remove some overhead, you're removing rent, um, your employee, you don't need to have the employee there 24 seven or you know, during late nights where after work and so on. Um, if it's just e commerce, right, e commerce can be done at home, it can be done anywhere, it can be done at the employees home, and they can work from home. Um, it's not necessary to be in a physical location that may or may not be dangerous after 6pm. And that is my solution as well as vending machines. And I can show you all the product we have. If I had to guess at least $20,000 in sealed product and then another 20,000 in singles, uh, probably more actually, probably 40,000. We've been buying collections and that's the one advantage of having a store. Um, people are accepting of your margins. So we can just say, hey, we are a store give us a better deal and then somehow it magically works. It's very interesting, right? <laughs> um, so we do have reviews, we have, um, I'll screenshot it on my Facebook, but in the next month, we'll probably have our 1000 visitor according to Facebook, which would be pretty cool. So our store is located at the same place as our marketing agency. And one of the additional benefits of that is that actually it seems like a lot of people are working or are visiting a marketing agency, but they're really just visiting the store. So that's a pretty big milestone. Um, we have hundreds, if not thousands of Pokemon tins. Uh, we buy the tins at about $8 and 25 cents a tin. Now we used to buy them at eight, but inflation and they sell really well. Uh, they break down well, people like it. It's just these knickknacks. We also started selling Legos. So a lot of you made a very good comment and we did take it to heart. So even though I may have been abrasive to understanding it, I get it now. It's not enough just to sell Pokemon. You have to sell these like knickknacks, like Lego mystery packs and Zoom Zooms and more Lego figures and, um, even when you sell anime figures, you have to, you can't, one of my favorite anime figures I just recently have stock of is Anaplex's Ishtar and Anaplex's Saber Wedding. Those are $250 figures. Uh, we also have the Sakura from Fate Grand. We have lots of Saber figures retailing at $200, $250, but you have to diversify. 
you need $20 figures, $30 figures, $40 figures, $50 figures, and so on. So Hasbro Pulse is a danger to Rudy's model. Uh, Rudy's model is a danger to local game stores. And so on. Eventually, we will buy singles. So you can question. Mythic Edition kind of is like us buying singles, right? Because we're paying a set amount of money and we're guaranteed eight single planeswalkers. So and those planeswalkers are theoretically capped by what you could buy once they're in stock. That So each planeswalker cannot be more than $240 or $250 because that would make no sense because you could buy this whole booster box plus eight, seven more planeswalkers for that price. So you're capping the secondary market on what can be sold. This is a big danger to distributors, um, this direct to market. Uh, Rudy in his video talks about Amazon and how Amazon is setting the MSRP at $90. And everyone has to follow that because Amazon can f deliver that to your door in two days for 90 bucks. And Wizard of the Coast is totally okay with that. Uh, the local game store is effed. Like there's no other way for me to say it except I wanted to run a store for a year and we're probably going to last our lease lasts until uh april so for four months uh, end of april and that's it that's as long as we could last i mean we did open december but we weren't really open so for five months is the most i could take the beating and it truly is a beating because i looked into get a wpn and all this stuff and you know growing your audience but when you first start off uh, and your location is obviously very important. It's probably not good to be near a mall called Gunpoint Mall. Obviously, that was our first mistake or my first mistake. But one of the good things is we have lots of great product. Our product is good. I'm happy with the prices. I know some people said, oh, this price. Is no, I'm happy with the prices. I know as an individual buyer, I cannot buy as cheaply as I can buy as a store. And the distributors we work with are the same people who work with Walmart. Our product, any product Walmart gets, we get to. Now, we don't have any control over the amount or the exact quantity, or sorry, the exact quality of the product. So, for instance, I would want a million EV tins because EV is popular and not a Machamp tin because Machamp is really ugly. But... I don't know how many Machamp tins I'm going to get. I don't know how many EV tins I'm going to get. It's just kind of random. The other big savior has been our my reserve list cards. Um, previously, we purchased very before reserve list cards spiked. Before we had all of that, I had a very large collection of bulk cards, or what I believed was bulk at the time, and it turned out, oh my goodness, there was so much value. Uh, so much value in uh, those bulk, like Mana Servants, 100 copies. That Pirate from Mirage, I remembered, is 200 copies of that dude. There's a few hundred copies of the, oh yeah, what was that? What was the Norwales? Man, a million copies of Norwales, unlimited copies of Norwales, and so on. So, opening store, I will be making episodes. I am trying to produce higher content because uh, I've been really inspired by this PewDiePie figure, PewDiePie. And once, you know, I get that together, I'll show you margins, I'll show you product, um, I'll interview customers, um, I'll interview my friends. They're the main customers. I actually have a stack of um, packs right now. We actually, we sell loose packs as well, which is kind of interesting because you wouldn't really think that we'd sell them, but hey, it makes... If it makes money, but we sell late, we sell a lot of these mystery packs: Lego, Harry Potter, Batman, Superman. Like Legos, sell really well. Um, so I had learned, and in board games, that we have to stock other stuff. So the booster packs and the magic cards are add-on items. So it's kind of like you have to get about forty dollars of items, but they don't want to buy forty dollars of magic cards. They want to buy you know, a Lego pack and then a mystery anime figure or a cheap anime figure and then a few magic packs. So the orders we have found to be very, uh, very strange. And I have really put money into uh, stuff that um, I think was, has lasting value, meaning that if 
somehow the worst case scenario, these things would still have lots of value. Uh, the Pokemon tins, for instance, can be used for decoration, and little kids love storing stuff, just random stuff in them. And the parents love it too, because it teaches them organization, I suppose. Uh, Conspiracy Take the Crown, as you know, uh, I've opened a lot of those boxes on this channel, and I have multiple cases. Thank you, Alpha Investments, for making it expensive. Masters 25, we have cases of that. Innistrad, cases of that. And then just the sheer amount of bulk. So I have protected myself from the direct posts. Um, and Rudy seems a little worried, although I don't know if it, he's generally concerned because I think his subscriber base just likes him for him. And even though that they could buy cheaper and maybe better product from the Hasbro Direct, they'll probably stick with him. But it is a danger. It's a uh, danger. I mean, he recognizes it as a danger because if you can buy directly from Wizards of the Coast, why would you ever buy from your local game store? And why would a local game store ever carry magic when there's such a high requirement uh, of, you know, hey, you have to do FNM. If you don't do FNM, there's no pre-release for you. Then you get your WPN taken away and then no more promos. Um, it seems very... My new store model, which I'm very happy with, is we kept the employee. Uh, we kept the worker bee. And that is a personal decision I made. I've always felt like um, I don't want to hire someone unless I give them, unless I believe you're going to be here for 10, 15 years, I won't even hire you to start. And that's really a personality. I have a very, very unique personality and I don't get along with a lot of people. So it's hard to find people who get along with me. And therefore, it's kind of like a promise. It's like a promise that, hey, you know, this didn't work out. The retail store didn't work out. And we're going to put resources to train you. We're sending everyone to Spanish class, by the way. So I'll be able to speak Spanish soon. In case, and then we'll open some Spanish magic cards. And I'll butcher the Spanish language for your entertainment very soon. But a lot of the things that I think of and as dangers to Magic the Gathering stores. Um, and Rudy has quite correctly identified them. Uh, his videos are very honest, and I like him. He does sometimes over-exaggerate things, I think. But overall, there is a danger to a local game store, and not just any local game store, but also to his model as well. The danger is there's nowhere to play Magic anymore. Uh, and my DNA Comics, which is the game store I've always gone to, no longer carries Magic. This was a place with 150 people playing at every pre-release. And now it doesn't do a, a, a lick of magic. It doesn't buy magic singles. It doesn't sell magic. I, mean, I think they sell a little bit of their back stock inventory because I know they have lots of Dragon Maze left. But they don't carry the new stuff. There's no Ultimate Masters. It's quite sad. But if MTG Arena is the future, then maybe we don't need local game stores. Everyone just signs on online and we can stream it. And I'm looking into that as well. Um, I think I did find the team member I've been looking for, but she is very shy. And uh, for the most part, you know, I, you know, she did apply for a job that she would have to vlog and do things of this nature. But um, I can't be lazy. I have to be engaged. I have to be active. I really do want my store to be successful because I can bring you uh, cards, magic cards at cheaper price than most people for those products. The reason I stay away from a booster box I don't want to compete against Rudy. That's not something I'm interested in doing. I think he has very, very low prices for booster boxes, and I don't want to go down there. But for blister packs and uh, Pokemon stuff and anime stuff and things that he doesn't carry, I carry it all. Um, the singles, I sell singles, and the singles sell really well. I sell, quote, investment portfolios, which you guys have seen on the channel before. It's just a bunch of... Uh, previously bulk reserve list cards but now they're like 10 bucks oh wall of kelp i sold a i sold like 60 or 80 wall of kelps for about 20 bucks in a quote investment portfolio where there was like counter spells and other stuff well it turns out wall of kelp is no longer 10 cents so that was a good investment portfolio for the buyer and i know who the buyers are because it's only been my friends uh, they buy like hundreds of dollars of this stuff because they love it it's like a, a booster pack for rich people Oh no, it's only 20 bucks. Huh. 
I should probably charge more. I'm going to charge more. Anyway, Hasbro Direct or Hasbro Post is a danger to a lot of local game stores. I think it is the beginning of the end, if not the middle of the end for your local game store, unless they can diversify. And that was something I took to heart. A lot of you said that the reason my store is doing very poorly was the lack of diversification, and I absolutely agree with you. I 100% agree with you. But uh, if you want to learn more about my store, which I will vlog my store videos on this channel, then please subscribe to that channel because I really need the views and the subscribers to get my sweet vengeance on the Houston social media people who have outcasted me for over four years now, maybe five years. Bye.